Good afternoon, I am Mr. S. You are joining me for this problems video on area between curves. Directly prior to this video, we presented the concepts and the techniques for area between curves. An interesting and comprehensive topic found within the realm of integral calculus. And in this video, we're just looking at three quick problems. We're going to try to make this video to the point and concise that is just to maintain our attention levels with this video we have two general schemes which i've talked about in the previous video when you're looking at area between curves you can find curves which have a vertical or up and down orientation in which case for the area between those curves you're looking at the top boundary and a lower boundary curve and the difference of the two and integrating it across in another scenario you see right and left oriented curves where the region is such that you have a right side and a left side curve and then you integrate it as such. In this video where and when appropriate based on the graphing that will come into play for that specific problem we will decide whether we will use this route or this route. Either route is easy and there should be no complexity involved with the type of questions that we will look at. They will be good questions and they will be interesting. When we look at these type of questions, the area between curves, it's always important to remember your factoring and completing by the square techniques because they can come into play. And it's always interesting and important to utilize graphing when needed because the graphing helps you determine what type of route, whether you have vertically oriented curves or horizontally oriented curves. When you look over here, you see very clearly a parabolic and here you see a linear. When you're looking at this first equation it's not a bad idea to determine the vertex and you can do that by completing the square technique and we can proceed with that and you know how to do this technique you have to complete by the square to determine the vertex here you get an x square minus 5x plus 25 over 4 and here you will get a 25 over 4 all of this equaling to 0 you'll have a minus into x minus 5 over 2 whole square plus 25 over 4 so the vertex here is clearly h comma k you have 5 over 2 comma 25 over 4 and it's a good idea to graph it because it helps you orient what you're dealing with if you were to just plug x in place of 0 you would get a y value of a 0 so you know this curve will go to the origin for sure it has a vertex of 5 over 2 comma 25 over 4 we can just do a rough orientation here and we know there's a minus here so it's a parabola pointing downwards you have a y equals x going in this direction which always goes to the origin so the area between the curves is bounded by these two functions and this is exactly what we're looking at we have one intersection point over here which happens to be the origin and here origin is easily seen the other intersection point has to be determined and we need to find it by making these two equations equal to each other 5x minus x squared is equal to x bring it on the other side minus x squared plus 4x is equal to 0 you can isolate a minus x you have a minus x and you have an x a minus 4 is equal to 0 and x is equal to 0 comma 4 if this right here is 0 comma 0 then this must be 4 comma and you can easily find this value to be 4 by plugging a 4 in either of these you'll get a y value of 4 so we now figure out our interval for this is 0 comma 4 what type of orientation are we looking at here we're basically looking at top and bottom boundary curves so yt and yb we know the parabola here serves as a top boundary curve and the linear line y equals x serves as a bottom boundary curve and that's about all we need to know to finish this question and let's do so to create our integral we're looking here everything with respect to x because our intervals are along the x-axis we're dealing with vertically oriented curves top and bottom boundary curves we know now our interval is 0 to 4 we have a top boundary curve minus a lower boundary curve with respect to dx the top boundary curve is easily the parabola 5x minus x squared the lower boundary curve is a linear line and you just have to integrate this it's not hard when you integrate this you can open up this parenthesis you have minus x squared plus 4x dx this is just a polynomial integration not hard we will do it you'll have a minus x cube over 3 plus 2x squared from an upper 4 to a lower 0 and we can easily do this publish the value put 4 in places of the x put zeros in places of the x and the difference of the 2 and we'll publish the value over here we'll put a fractional answer over here the area with regards to x is 32 over 3 which represents the area of that shaded region and the question is done not too hard but you followed through with the scheme that we laid out and this is how you should do this this next question here provides us with these two equations 
when you look at them very quickly, you're thinking about right and left facing parabolas. This being a right facing parabola, conic section parabola, and that being a left facing conic section parabola. If you want to proceed with graphing, you can. For the purposes of this video, we can. When we do this, you're completing by the square, you'll have y squared minus 4y plus 4. When you're doing here, you have a minus and you have a y squared minus 2y. Here you can bring a plus 1. When you bring the plus 1 on the other side, it comes across as a minus 1, x minus 1. This right here is completing by the square technique. You can take this to x plus 4 right here is equal to y minus 2 whole square. Here you have an x minus 1 is equal to minus. If you want, you could bring the minus on that side. You don't have to. y minus 1 whole square. When you do this, next step you can get the vertices. Here the vertex is a minus 4 comma 2. Here the vertex is going to be a 1 comma 1. So we have our vertices minus 4 comma 2, 1 comma 1. We can make these equations equal to each other and we can come up with some good intersection points. Because they're both equal to x, you equal them to each other. y squared minus 4y is equal to minus y squared plus 2y. Bring everything onto one side. Here you'll have 2y squared minus 6y is equal to 0. You can isolate a 2y over here and you have a y minus 3 is equal to 0. y is equal to 0 comma 3. When y is equal to 0, you have an x value coming out here to be 0. So you know the origin is involved for both of these curves. When you have a y value of a 3, what do you get in terms of an x value? Plug 3 into in any of these, you'll get a 9 minus 12 minus 3. Let's graph it out. We're looking at a 0 comma 0 and a minus 3 comma 3. Here we have a minus 4 comma 2 and here we have a 1 comma 1. So in terms of graphing we're looking at something like this. Like this. I know the graph is a little rough but here's my one intersection point right here minus 3 comma 3 and here's my other intersection point the origin and we're looking at this area right over here. So we clearly know that there's a left boundary curve and a right boundary curve. The right boundary curve is a left facing parabola and the left boundary curve is a right facing parabola. This right here, which is a right facing parabola, ends up being my XL. This right here, which is a left facing parabola, ends up being right sided boundary curve. And now we have our interval 0 to 3 along the Y direction. See from 0, from 0 up to this 3 value. 0 up to 3 in terms of the Y. That gives us our interval and we can integrate this now. When you integrate it, the formula is this. Area with respect to y from 0 to 3, your right boundary curve minus the left boundary curve dy. And we have everything already marked here from 0 to 3. Our right boundary curve is this, minus y squared plus 2y. And our left boundary curve is this, y squared minus 4y dy. Open up everything over here. And we can do that, we'll get a minus 2y squared here we'll get a plus 6y with respect to dy. Integrate all of this. You'll have a minus 2y cube over 3 plus 6y squared over 2, which is a 3y squared. From an upper limit 3 to a lower limit 0. When you put 3 in the first area, you're going to get a minus 54 over 3. Minus 18. From the second term, you're getting a 27. When you add these up, you get a 9. 9 represents the area of that shaded portion which is found between both of these horizontally oriented parabolas and the answer is good. We'll end this video with this last question but we'll do this question in two different ways because one will end up being a shortcut way which we'll show you at the second point and the longer way we'll show you initially. You know you're looking at trigonometric functions and the interval has been provided. It's good to start out here with a good graph. You know cosine starts from a 0 comma 1 in terms of this interval. We have a pi over 4 and we have a pi over 2. The cosine graph will go like this because it intersects at the x-axis at 90 degrees. The sine starts at the origin and is going to go up right over here at pi over 2 comma 1. This right here represents your pi over 4. When you're looking at this interval, you're looking at this area between the curve and then this area right over here. All of that. So you have two different intervals which come into play from 0 to pi over 4 and then pi over 4 to pi over 2. And in each instance, you have the curves which flip. Here's a top boundary curve because you have vertically oriented curves there. So you're, you're looking at this scheme. Here's a top boundary curve and a lower boundary curve. From the interval 0 to pi over 4, the cosine x ends up being the top boundary curve and the sine x is the lower boundary curve dx. And here you know you're looking at everything with regards to x. Then you have to add these intervals. Then from pi over 4, 
Remember, I'm showing you the longer weight. We'll do the shorter weight next. From this interval, pi over 4, 45 to 90, the sine x is a upper boundary curve and cosine x is the lower boundary curve and dx. Easy integration over here, cosine x becomes a sine x. Sine x is a minus cosine x. With that minus is with that minus, you get a plus cosine x. Here from pi over four and zero plus sine x gives you a minus cosine x and this minus cosine x gives you a positive sine x but in the presence of that minus it stays a minus sine x from upper pi over two to pi over four. I'm gonna do a little change over here. I'm gonna isolate the minus and I'm gonna bring the minus out here and these will become positives. It's no different than what was already there. Now the definite integration part can be a little tricky so you can make a silly mistake over there. In each instance of these x's, you have to put the upper and the lower limit and the difference. In the first part, you're looking at sine 45 minus sine 0, and you know sine 45 is root 2 over 2 minus sine 0, plus cosine 45 is a root 2 over 2 minus cosine 0 is a 1 minus. Here, cosine 90 is a 0, and cosine 45 is a root 2 over 2. And we have this parentheses sticking out, which is going to be impacted by the minus. Sine 90 is a 1. Sine 45 is a root 2 over 2. This is what I was alluding to. You can make a silly mistake over here. From this first part, you get a root 2 over 2. Here you get a root 2 over 2 minus 1. This is the area where you can make a mistake. Here minus and minus root 2 over 2 is a plus root 2 over 2. This minus and that. 1, positive 1 is a minus 1. This minus and this minus root 2 over 2 is a plus root 2 over 2. When you combine all of this, you have 4 root 2s over 2, which is 4 root 2 over 2 minus 2. This is really a 2 root 2 minus 2, and you can present a decimal answer, or this right here can be your actual answer, 2 root 2 minus 2. Well, let's present a decimal answer. Our area is 0.828. Represent the combined total area of the shaded portion. Now this was the long way of doing it. Let's show you the very quick and easy way of doing the same question. The quick easy way of this would have been to recognize that what you seem to have over here is a line of symmetry abounded on both the right and the left side by equally shaded portions, something like a even function. You are really looking from a zero to pi over four then pi over four to pi over two. What you could really have done was either calculate this interval only or calculate this interval only and each instance multiplied by two rather than looking at the combined total. And you could just do everything here from zero to pi over four and multiply everything by two because everything seems to be symmetric around this x equals pi over four symmetry line. And that's what you could have done. So looking only in this portion from zero to pi over four, the top boundary curve was cosine x and the lower boundary curve was just sine x dx and this times 2 covers everything else and you could have just gone with this and you would be right. Cosine x would be sine x minus sine x here would become a plus cosine x from an upper pi over 4 to 0 in each instance you do the upper lower limit and the difference of the two. Sine pi over 4 is a root 2 over 2 minus sine 0 plus Cosine pi over 4 is a root 2 over 2 minus cosine of 0, which is a 1. Open up all of this, you'll have a 2 times a root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 minus 1. Combine all of this, you'll have a 2 times 2 root 2 over 2 minus 1. You can open this up, you'll have 2 root 2 minus 2, and that's exactly where we're headed. And the answer very clearly is 0.828, because this is the expression we got right in the preceding part where we looked at the combined cumulative effect of everything. Here we just did everything in terms of just half of it and we multiplied by 2 to cover the entire interval. And this right here is probably the way to do it. Less confusion, less mess, and less chance to make a mistake. And that's it for this video with regard to some practice problems for area between curves. We can look at some more questions in another video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.